Thank you and uh, good afternoon and uh, thank you for uh, showing interest in the, the work of uh, the Commission. Uh, as you know, with uh, uh, our international monitoring system uh, detected uh, yesterday at uh, 1.30 UTC an unusual seismic event in the Korean Peninsula. And uh, this event uh, was and is still under scrutiny and as I speak now, we have issued what we call our reviewed event bulletin, which now takes into account human intervention, the interactive analysis by, by our international data center analysts, uh, which now put the event in the population of a man-made explosion. And this is what we know now. Yesterday, we're still under uh, estimate with regard to location, position, but the minute we review and we issue the review event bulletin, that means that this is a definite uh, solution with regard to the event, the seismic event in the Korean Peninsula. So we can say now, in terms of putting a population uh, between a man-made or a natural event, that the event of yesterday, 1.30 UTC, is indeed a man-made explosion. And what that means, it means simply that we still have to wait for a potential radionuclide release. And a potential radionuclide release can only come within the next couple of days. And that will give to our state signatories the next element for them to draw the conclusion whether we're dealing or we dealt yesterday with a nuclear test explosion or not. And that will have to wait. Uh, our first estimate based on the atmospheric transfer modeling and the weather condition uh, we might be, if we're lucky, and if there is a correlation of a release, that we get something by end of the day tomorrow. But that will be the first, most plausible estimate of a potential release. But you have to take into account that in previous cases, it took us sometimes 50 days before we could get any release that could be correlated to a seismic event. So this is what we can say. At least now, we have a definite answer that we're not dealing with a natural event. We're dealing with, indeed, a man-made explosion. Thank you. I will hand over to the chairperson of the commission to brief you on the meeting we've just had uh, since he's the one who was sharing. Ambassador Israde, you have a floor. Thank you, Executive Secretary. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, we just uh, concluded a very important special meeting of the um, uh, Commission and um, uh, we listened to uh, a uh, very detailed update by the uh, Provisional Technical Secretariat uh, and then uh, we listened to uh, statements made by uh, delegations. Uh, and I think um, I would uh, like to underline uh, uh, one particular conclusion, which is that uh, at the beginning of this um, uh, uh, important year, which is the 20th anniversary of the signing of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and the establishment of the Commission, uh, it was an overwhelming support from the signatory states for the entry into force of the treaty. We have to make every effort, this year in particular, to ensure that we uh, are able to, uh, all those remaining states, to ratify the treaty and to uh, secure its uh, early entry into force because the treaty is a uh, very important instrument to um, deter and detect nuclear test explosions. I thank you very much. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll uh, open the floor for questions um, uh, in, in, uh, in a minute. Before we uh, get into the question, uh, as uh, Ambassador Israde mentioned, uh, all delegations who have intervened today during our uh, PrepCom meeting have uh, condemned uh, 
the annonce, a test by uh, the Democratic Republic of Korea. Uh, as you know, uh, often uh, people tend to forget uh, that the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty and its verification system or regime is the only entity that deals with detection of nuclear test explosion. Uh, we're happy that today you're showing that much interest to know of this organization, what we do, how much technical capability we've gathered for the past 20 years, and how unfortunate it is that the treaty is not yet into force, and yet technically we're 100% ready. And when I say 100% ready, I'm talking about our capability to detect a suspicious event as we've showed in this last case, and as I'm telling you today, that we've uh, identified now that we're dealing with an event that fits in the population of explosion. Thank you. So, do we open the floor for questions? Uh, Dr. Zabo, thank you for your explanation. Sh this is Shadia Nasrallah from Reuters. Um, I'd be interested to know if it's technically possible once you start detecting radionuclide particles, whether this event was indeed a hydrogen bomb or what some might call a normal fission bomb. Thank you. And if so, when at the earliest you might be in a position to say thanks? Uh, first of all, the earliest we're in a position to talk about radionuclear detection, uh, I say, would be the best uh, plausible situation, best case scenario is uh, tomorrow, late tomorrow. But a detection by our system of a radionuclear release doesn't mean that we have to deal or to start analyzing whether we're dealing with a hydrogen bomb or not. Uh, we've heard a lot of speculation about whether this is possible or not uh, from uh, what was announced by the DPRK. Uh, what I want to stress out is that no matter the nature of the test, we're here to stop and to put an end to any nuclear test explosion. And this is our job, and this is our mandate, to make sure that our system represents the deterrent that state signatories want to stop potential violators in conducting nuclear test explosion. There are speculation that the fact that the test is similar to the 2013 one uh, in terms of signal, because they're like twin a signal in terms of signatures uh, that, and with slightly less magnitude uh, for this uh, last one, uh, some are speculating with regard to our data that it's unlikely that it is what was announced by the DPRK. But that's not something that we do because it's not part of our mandate. That's all what I can say with regard to the nature of a potential uh, confirmation of uh, a test by the DPRK. Uh, Albert Otti, DPA, German Press Agency. You just said it was a slightly lower magnitude. Ca can you give us e the latest uh, CTPTO estimate on the magnitude? Because yesterday we heard it was the same magnitude. Yeah, when we say, I mean, when we talk about same, you have to, we have, first of all, some uh, preliminary estimate in terms of magnitude, but we're bringing more station into contribution for the detection and to fine tuning as well our information. Yesterday, we talked about a magnitude 5 uh, for the 2013, and then potentially magnitude 4.9. That's what we said yesterday. Today, we likely, what we have is uh, 4.85, and then compared to 4.9 or 5 for 2013. There is basically 0 0.0, and then the final that we have is indeed 4.85 magnitude, and the 2013 was 4.9 compared to the five in the preliminary estimate. So that's uh, the difference that we're getting in the magnitude of the two events. Yeah, okay, uh, my name is Ken Udagawa from Kyodo News, Japanese news agency. Hi, uh, I have uh, two questions. One is follow-up question to of the Reuters. And uh, th this is, the, uh, is there a typical radio nuclides uh, you can catch uh, w uh, after the explosion of hydrogen bomb. And if, if you know that, then please tell, tell us. And second question is, North Korea is also the one of the annexed two states. How can you 
persuade North Korea to ratify the CDPT. To your first question, let me uh, emphasize that we focus on xenon detection. Uh, since I mentioned that we're not getting into uh, making a difference between an hydrogen or any other type of nuclear uh, explosion or nuclear weapon, uh, I will not get into that speculation. However, uh, what I can tell you is that in 2013, uh, 50 days after the explosion, the events in the Korean Peninsula were able to uh, sniff in Takasaki, one of our stations in Japan, a emission of two xenon, xenon-131 and xenon-133. Uh, the reason why we correlated those two xenon to the events in the Korean Peninsula 50 days before, it's because when you do the ratio of those two, you're able to estimate the time of the fission. This is how far the technical secretariat can go. We're not getting into uh, uh, talking about the difference in the nuclear weapon. And then I want to emphasize again that for us, no matter what test it is, our intention is to put an end through the entry into force of the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty, which is now an urgency with the current geopolitical situation and what is happening now if it's confirmed a nucle another nuclear test explosion by the Democratic Republic of Korea. If so, Let's take it that this is a last wake-up call to the international community to start finding ways to build the trust that is necessary to secure the remaining ratification and to move uh, for the entry into force of the CTBT. The second question was... What does it take to get Korea? Uh, what does it take? I think <laughs> I've kind of answered this question. What it takes to get Korea as a nine as two I've often said that I don't agree with a 500 pound or 800 pound gorilla and a 150 pound gorilla. This is something that I've said. The eight remaining countries, I put them all in the same footing. They should all do domestically what is needed using what we've built for the past 20 years, the technical means that we've put together thanks to their taxpayers' money. They should put that into play to build the trust necessary domestically to consider the ratification of the CTBT. What it takes, it takes, for example, what it has taken to secure the Iran deal, to have a successful Iran deal, multilateral diplomacy with mutual respect and dignity. This is what we heard from those who were in those discussions, especially Foreign Minister Zarif. He insisted on the word dignity and respect. I think all this has helped. We need world leaders today to take the CTBT as an urgency, as a priority, because more tests can only lead to proliferation of nuclear weapon. And this is what we want to, to stop. And I think we should enter into dialogue with the Korean. If the way we've dealt with them hasn't worked, we have to find a way, another way. And I think diplomats can find this way. And I want to quote uh, President Obama when he talked about Cuba. He said, for 60 years, things haven't worked in Cuba. We need to change our attitude. And they did. Maybe there's something similar that we can do with the Korean and the others to secure their, their ratification through building trust and confidence domestically. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, this is Kazuto Sasa from uh, Japanese Public TV Station NHK. Um, I just have, like, sorry to ask, like, similar questions again. Uh, but the, uh, I do understand well that, like, the, uh, the aim of CTBT is uh, no uh, tests ever. And also, it's from yesterday's uh, press stakeout, I do understand well it's not CTBT. Or to draw conclusion, it was hydrogen bomb or not. But um, um, uh, North Korea had say, said that it, they tested hydrogen bomb, and uh, under this circumstance, I just uh, like from your like the stations around the world, uh, is it possible? There's a possibility that the, those stations may catch the substance that may be able to help to whether like a member states to determine draw the conclusion whether it was hydrogen bomb or not. 
I think we, under the treaty and under the design of the international monitoring system and the build-up of the verification regime of the CTBT, all our information are made available to state signatories, and now even more so to the international community. Whether they will use some of the information to make a case to determining whether we're dealing with an hydrogen bomb or not, it's a responsibility of the states under the national technical means, which is a jargon that we often use. Now, as a scientist, what I hear about the speculation is that when you reach the level of hydrogen bomb, you get to the higher explosion or the other equ higher equivalent TNT, which on the basis of the magnitude that we're giving, it's not the case. But that is up for those who analyze those events to make and draw that conclusion. I'm just taking my hat as a scientist to just read what people are talking about and then to make this uh, current statement. But I will not engage the organization into determining whether we're dealing with an hydrogen or not, an hydrogen bomb or not. Thank you.